right, good morning and welcome once again. In today's video, I want to show us how to draft or cut our bumper jackets. Having seen the items are listed in the group, the items needed, your zip, your fabric, your rubber or your elastic for the sleeve and for the down and for the neck and then your lining. You must make use of cutting lining in um, sewing your jacket. That's the only way you will enjoy the outfit proper and bear in mind that you are going to do a total ceiling inside so it's going to be um, a unique story and then you need to have a good lining inside for you to be able to enjoy the sewing now on the board i have my chest measurements or both measurements my sleeve length the round sleeves the neck the top length and the shoulder now this method i'm going to use now you know our jacket is a unisex outfit so it's not sex um, 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 differentiating you have either the measurement as a female or as a male which will give you the same sewing custom processes now the bust uh, or the chest the sleeve length the round sleeve the neck the top left and the shoulder so these are the areas you will measure like i said um, on the class that the measurement should not be a fitted measurement now my hips for the um i didn't have my hip here the hip we are going to work with here will be hips of 49 49 hips so this is the measurement we are going to have to use in cutting our bumper jacket and then like i said uh, um, if this measurement was to be a fitted measurement all you need to do is to add extra two inches to the chest and to the hip this is the only area you're going to manipulate but the rest remains as fitted as possible and then a bit on the sleeves extra one inch to the biceps and the elbow and this for the fist so for those of us that know how to measure you understand what i'm saying if you don't know how to measure i will i might probably help us to drop us a video on how to measure get a good client measurement but right here i believe all of us in the group must have known or seen how to measure so when you measure the next thing you're going to do now is is to start drafting so let's go to the table and draft here the first thing you will do is to make sure that your edge here you have a smooth edge take your time to to mark so that you have a smooth edge and then you um, cut it off and then proceed to the other cutting aspects so this is for the edge so as well remove the english mouth bear in mind that this ankara you can use another material uh, but then make sure it must be a fanciful material that will be attracting attractive it should not be a dull one except if you so wish to have it, a plain sewing or a plain material you can go ahead and make use of your material so all your markings like all, all of us know must be done on the wrong side of the fabric so you fold it in this form the two edges coming together so i'll cut it off now and then show you the next thing to do so right now um after you must have trimmed off the edge the next thing you're going to do now is to put your zip allowance the zip allowance is the next thing you do and the measurement is 1.5 inches this 1.5 is the least you can add but if you so wish to add one inch that's no problem but i would suggest you make use of 1.5 inch zip allowance 1.5 inch zip allowance so after that you connect the lines in this form in this form this will be for the zip allowance 1.5 inches and then the next thing you will do next is you apply your top length now my top length i have is 29 and a half on the board then the only allowance you will need to add here is extra one and a half inch one inch to slant the shoulder making it 30 and then half inch to join the rubber to this making it 30 and a half now before i proceed you know that our rubber will be attached here now i first of all apply the total top length then after you must have applied the top length you now after cutting that is the time you now minus or deduct or cut off the rubber measurement don't remove it now when cutting so that you won't make mistakes in your top length apply directly later on you cut it off and then proceed so like i said the top length i have is um, 29 
you add extra one inch to it, the one inch for the slant of the shoulder, making it 30, and then half inch to join the shoulder to this, making it 30 and half. So that and half is my top length I have now. So you apply your top length at 30 inches. Then, after you must have done that, you draw the line. This becomes your shoulder line. This becomes your shoulder line. Now the shoulder line is what you have here. Then the next thing you're going to do now is your armhole, which I told us on my previous videos that armhole, armhole, the formula is um, chest over four minus one. Chest over four minus one. So my chest is 44 here. Over four is 11. Minus one from it will give us 10. So the armhole I'm working with is 10 inches. Why minus one? Because of long sleeve. It's long sleeve. If it was short sleeve, you would just use 11 for your short sleeve. But bear in mind that your bumper jacket must be long sleeve. So 10 inch is the inch of the allowance I have. And then that is um, what I will use to do my armhole measurements. Right here, you mark 10 inch. 10 inch. The method I'm using to sew the jacket you will use it for both male and female. It's unisex, both male and female. As long as your measurement is correct, it will work well for your clients. So you mark your 10 inch. So here it becomes my armhole line, or my um, chest line, or my bust line. So everything is applied together on this bumper jacket. So after that, you now apply the real chest measurement by 4, which is 11. From the one inch, from the one and a half zip allowance you marked, you mark 11, that's your chest measurement. Then you add extra two inches in seam allowance. Very important, two inches in seam allowance. The next you're gonna do now is your shoulder. My shoulder is 18 and a half, we are 18 and a half. So 18 and a half is um, um, 9.25. Then you add extra 0 0.3 or half inch to join your sleeve which is giving me 9.5, that's 19 now, right? 19. So, you connect your armhole, your chest line to your shoulder line, your rear chest line, connect it this way. Then, the next thing you're gonna do now is your neckline calculations, which I told us that your neckline, the formula is two pi r or two pi. If you work at this, you have pi being 22 over seven, and then if you make R your SF, you have R equals to 2 times this. Then you have um, um, 2 times 3, 142, 142. And then if you um, multiply, you have 6.284. If you run it up to the next whole number, you are going to left, be left with 6 inches, 6, 6. So this is inches. is a constant formula you will use to divide your neck. The neck is, um, neck I have 17 and a half over 6. It's going to give you um, 17 and a half over 6. It's going to give you um, 2.91. 2.91. So you can roughly say you have 2.9 as your neck line measurement. Then, convention will tell you that whatever answer you get in your neck division, the answer should be used as the width was measurement. Now, for you to get the depth, you add extra half to it. That's 2.9 is for the width, and then adding half to this will we, we give me 3.2. That's making it um, for the depth weight and um, depth was measurement. So you have to come here, mark 2.9, which is a digit or a dot before 3 inches. Mark 2.9 for your customer, 2.9, and then adding 0 0.5 to it, giving me 3.4, 3.5. So I will mark at um, 3.5 for my customer. Then you extend the line this way, extend it again this way, and then you use your um, neckline curve or armhole curve, and then you connect it with a curve this way. Then this is how your neckline should be. Be in mind that where I started to mark my neck is from the 1.5 inch I marked and not from the edge from this line of the zip allowance where it ended is where you start to apply your neck measurements both the width and then the depth of 3.5 so after that the next thing you want to do now is you slant your shoulder 
Now slanting, the maximum or the minimum you can use is one inch slanting. You can try to use one and a half, one inch, whichever be your choice. But then, whatever you are going to use to slant, make sure it's what you added on the top length. Since we use one inch on the top length, we must make sure we return the one inch we used in addition of the top length. But had it been we want to slant by one and a half, whatever answer you added on the um, top length is what you are going to slant with. So right now, you mark one, one, one inch down from the shoulder line, one inch down, and then connect from the tip of the neck, the edge of the neck, to the one inch. Your connection must end here. Let it not surpass this point. Let the connection end here. Then the next thing you're going to do now is the armhole trimming. The armhole trimming is the effect you give your outfit to have a fitted um, um, nature on the armhole. So how then do you trim armhole? From the slanted line to the armhole remaining, which is 9 inches now, because we use 10 to do the armhole, minus one from it is now left with 9. So the middle of 9 is 4.5. You mark at 4.5. Then from the 4.5 inch mark, you mark one and a half or two inches maximum inside. So I'm going to mark at 1.7. That's 1.7 inwards. Now, bear in mind that in my subsequent or in my previous videos, I do trim both ways when cutting and before I fix my sleeve. But on this particular bumper jacket, I will trim only once. So all the trimmings you're going to do, do it right here. Because after cutting, and when coupling, you will not need you, you know there there will be no need again for you to trim your armhole because the bomber jacket is not meant to be fitted that much. It's meant to be a bit free on your body. Then you connect from your shoulder point to your arm to your 1.5 inch mark back to your armhole with your armhole curve. Then. You connect this way then when you connect that way you make sure the line is corresponding to your armhole line then this is for the armhole trimming this is for the armhole trimming right yeah for armhole trimming this is how it goes this way this is for the armhole trimming now the next you're going to do now is to apply your hip on your on the damp part of your jacket my hip is 49 49 by 4 from your 1.5 inch allowance you marked is where you are going to apply your uh, from your piece point you make measure your measurement so for 9.5 gave me 12.25 now you can roughly say 12.5 is what you have 12.5 then you mark 12.5 here and then extra 2 now the reason you should have extra 2 inches here or make it to be to, to for you to use your hip here, the reason is for you to have the 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 um, rumpling nature or the gathers nature, the jacket you should have on the downside of your jacket, and then it should not be too tight, neither should it be too free. It should just be exact of your um, waistline circumference. After you must have done that, you now connect from your allowances, your two inches down to your part of your jacket. So you're having it like in an A-line shape like form. Now by the time you put your robe at the damp pads, it will not compress or contract this area to lap properly. So this is for the jacket and front body. And then I'll take my time to go right around the, the neck for you to know how it looks like. If you have not been seeing clear vision, this is the neck. This is how it looks. I said that the neck measurement was divided by 6. We got 2.9. We now use them 2.9. For the width which is um, a, a a digit before three inches 2.9 and then and i said that from the 2.9 you add half inch to it making it 3.4 so if i now mark that um 3.5 on my um tape 3.5 for the neck depth and then i drew i drew the line straight and then use my armhole curve my neckline curve to connect the curve and i said that you will come down by one inch on the um, shoulder line now take it to the tip of the neck here and not at the line of the zip allowance the tip of this which was measurement of the neck then after that um, you do your armhole trimming which I said you have to get the middle of your armhole remaining with the middle um, get me 9 inches then the middle the, the center 
is um, 4.5 from the armhole remaining of 9 inches. From that 4.5, I came in by 1.5. I used 1.7 to come in, 1.7. Then I connected with my curve. Then before then, I must have applied my chest line, then plus extra two inches. And then I came to the damp part of the material. My hip was 49, which by four gave me 12.25. So I marked that 12.5 for the hip measurement. And then I had added extra two inches for it. Now I said that the edge here is giving me like a V like or an A line shaping or form. The reason for this A line is for you to have the rubber rumpling or rumples on the down part of the jacket so that you can have a perfect fitting on the side. So this is for the front body. The next that will come now, I will show you how to cut it and then show you the um, other um, um, part of the jacket, which is the back, which I will also show you how to cut. So you cut from the two inches line. You have marked cut from the two inches line then when, when you must have cut from this point then you come to the neckline area cut from the zip allowance this way cut it this way and then cut off from this point the slanted line and then cut from your armhole trimming the one that went in by 1 and 1.7 or 1.5 this way the cutting process is very easy with the complaint that is you have more work to do so this is for the front body so i will place this now and cut the back and show you how to cut the back now i have cut the front i have folded it for the back i i replace the front on the back then make sure you push out your 1.5 inch you marked for your zip allowance make it to lap at the folded edge of the back the front 1.5 you can as well use your iron to fold it inwards so you won't have any problem or mistake but if you don't have iron yet you can place it and 1.5 that place you did for your zip allowance place it at the center back and then make sure that is um, even both at the upside and on the downside then the next thing you're going to do now is to um, um, extend the line now the back jacket and the front are equal in length, are equal in length, then you extend the line this way, right? And then the back neck depth for everybody constant is um, one inch depth. Back neck depth is one inch. From this point, you mark one inch deep. That's for the depth of the neck, and then you cut. Then, after you must have marked this way, you can now cut it out. You now cut it out. You cut it out this way. Now, you also make sure that it's of the same length here. You cut it out. Bear in mind that the method I'm using is peculiar to me. I'm not trying to dispute any other method you might see out there, but if you want to have one of the simplest methods or ways and the most accurate method to use in sewing the jacket, I would suggest encourage you to use my method. The, the finishing or the outcome will be so interesting and so nice. As long as you keep to the measurement rules I gave you on set, at the onset, and then you cut the same armhole, yeah, cut the same armhole, bear in mind it's already a free outfit, the same armhole. So this is for the front and the back panel, so you um, place them together, and then the next thing you go to cut now is the sleeve, is the sleeve. So you put them aside and then let's cut the sleeve. So right now I want to cut the sleeve. So the material was folded into four. That you fold two first this way and then fold again right, into four. Now the guideline to get to exact folding can be said the bicep measurement, which is 15, 7.5 by 2, that's 1.5, plus extra 
3 to 5 inches, so I have 3.5 here left. That means my bicep was 15, 7.5 plus 3.5 is giving me 11. Again, so 11 is the width I use to get my folding inch. It can be more than this, it can be less than this, depending on your round sleeve measurement you have. So the sleeve length is um, um, 27. 27. Remember that this is a, a, a sleeve that will have a rubber at the fist, but here, right here, you're not meant to minus or deduct the rubber measurements. Cut the sleeve direct, directly that way. Later on, you cut it off, and then I'll show you the reason why you should do it that way. Then the total length is 27. You know, mark at 27. The 27 is the length. Then you add extra half to join to the shoulder, 27 and a half. Extra half again to join to the sleeve, making it 20, uh, to the cuff, to the um, rubber, making it 28. So you have one inch total addition, that 28 inch. So you now mark at your, show, your point here, 28. And then you draw a straight line. Then from the inner arm, this way, you mark, if it's for men, you mark three to four or three to five inch down. If for ladies, mark three to four. Men, three to five. Female, three to four. So for this uh, man now, I'm using five inch because his sleeve is long and all. But if it was for a lady that has this um, sleeve length of 23, 24, I can mark at three inches or three and a half. So for him now, I'm marking at five inch. So that's for the inner arm marking. Then you come to the fist. The fist is um, eight inches, eight by four, 8 by 2, sorry, is um, 4 inches. Then I will add extra 2 to it. Extra 2 to it. The 2 inches I'm adding is for the rumpling or the folding effect or the contraction effect the rubber will give to the sleeve, making it um, 6 inches. So I will mark 6 inches here. That the receive measurement by 2 plus extra two, um, divided by 2, then plus extra 2, making it 6 inches. This is 6 inches. Then you mark extra 1 inch for the inseam allowance right the, after that you connect from the edge of your sleeve here you connect and then go down this way you can decide to make it a direct hand cutting whichever be your hand pattern you use it's fine no problem then from this edge here you now connect it to the one inch inseam allowance which is here so that's for the sleeve and then you cut it off for the sleeve Bear in mind that you also have to put the lining on the sleeve. That is the most interesting part of the sewing, which will give you a perfect, a nice finishing. So this is for the sleeve of my jacket. Then you keep it aside, and then you are done cutting the fabrics. Then the next thing you are going to cut now is, um, if you look at the jumper jacket, hi here. If you look at it very well, you are seeing um, an Ankara edge here, right? This Ankara edge is very important as well. So I will show you how to cut it. And then let's take a look at the inside finishing of our jacket for you to know how it looks like. So this is how the inside should look. The inside should be sealed, total sealing. The sewing should not be seen inwards. It should be in this form. This for the other sleeve. It should be in this form. So I will tell you more on this, on the sewing process on the sewing part of the video so let's go to cut our this stuff here this is needed as well and then the placket for our in pocket we are going to do so let's cut the, the this is the last two parts you are going to cut before you proceed to the sewing process so right now for the um, um rubber edge and car i showed you the cutting measurement is five by five five by five you mark it this way the measure 5 inches width, 5 inches length, that is the maximum or the minimum rather you can use. Yeah, but I would suggest you make use of the 5, five, five by 5 so that you will be sure of what you are riding at. 5 by 5, then this is for the 2, it's been double folded. So it's for the 2, both the left part and the right part of it. So you cut it this way, 5 by 5. 5x5, five five, then you slit, right? So you are done with this. So the next thing you are going to cut now is the um, plaquette for the um, inner in pocket. Yeah, yeah. 
the plug is in pocket. So how then do you cut it? <coughs> Fold it this way into two. Now the measurement for the placket is going to be dependent on the pocket size you want to have. But then the least measurement you're going to have here for the width is going to be five inches. Five inches width because it's going to be double folded. Five inches width this way and then length I'm going to use them um, eight inches placket for it. You can use seven and a half, you can use eight. Because my pocket might be 6 inches opening, so it should be 2 inches bigger than the actual pocket opening. So 5 inches is what I'm going to use, which is a constant. Then, when you have it this way, you cut it off. And then the next thing I'm going to do now is to go and gum with your gum stair. You have to go and gum with your gum stair. This is for the pocket placket because it's, it, after gumming now, you fold it into two this way and then make use of it in sewing. So this is for the placket. Then the next thing you're going to cut now is the pocketing of the bumper jacket. That's if your own, you have pocket too, but if you don't want to pocket, no problem. The pocketing measurement is 16 by 16. That's when open, 16 by 16. Then when folded, 8 by 8 by 8. Now remember that the placket we use here was um, 8 inches, right? 8 inches. So if your, if your placket was 8 inches, use 8 inches width for the pocket. If it was 7, use 7. So right here, we are going to um, use 16 by 16 inch pocket. That's um, 16 length. But it's 2 here, so I'm going to cut it at um, yeah, 16 exactly length and then 16 width. So this is for two. So 16 by 8. 16 by 8. Sorry. Not 16 by 16. 16 by 8. That's 16 inches opening and one edge 16. 16 by 8. Then you cut it this way. And then cut this one as well. This way. So right here, you have your Slitted pocketing, and then this is how it's going to stand or stay in your pocket. So the measurement now is um, 8 inches, that's 16 by 8 inches, that's 16. Sorry, 16 this way, yeah, only 8 this way, and then 16 this way, because it's, here it's double now, yeah. So 16 by 8 for the pocketing. So this is the, the last thing you're gonna cut now. So the next we are going to do now is to start deducting our measurements which I as well show us in the video so this is for the pocketing this is for the placket um, for the edge rubber for the placket and then the sleeve and then you bring out your rubber the one you are going to use for the damp parts and the sleeves so you fold it into two this way because it's always coming in in this form right so you fold it into two this way you fold it into two this way and then you measure you measure now whatever total length is giving you is what you are going to deduct or minus from your fabric you have already cut so you measure so it's giving me 2.3 2.5 you can as well say two inches right so but i'm going to minus 2.5 from the length of my um, um jacket that i've already cut and then um I cut it out then the rubber will now augment the jacket so let me cut the jacket yeah. we are going to deduct the 2.5 because the front and the back are equal are placed together so mark 2.5 inch measurement from here and then you deduct the measurement so right here you mark 2.5 2.5 then you extend this way then you cut it off from this point then you have deduct the measurement of the rubber then this for the rubber you are going to replace with this now right you want to replace with this now this is the rubber 
So that's for the down. Then somebody will ask me what is the length of this rubber now. Now convention will tell you that you you are going to make use of um, the total back measurement rubber to cut out your rubber. But most times these rubbers can be over stretchy, so you might not be able to get exact of the rubber. So what I now do is you place the rubber on your measurement, the rubber on your measurement on your client's uh, uh, measurement. Now, the ships I have is um, 49. And then you're going to measure out more than half of this. More than half of this, which is um, a half 23 here. So this one, three inch length. If I stretch it very well. Now check the rubber elasticity to know if it's that stretchy enough to get up to 49. And then bear in mind that at the edge of this rubber, you are going to put the 5, five, five by 5 inch Ankara we cut out to augment. So it's something that you, when you are doing it, you, you can as well, if you're making for yourself, you can as well pass the rubber round your hip measurements, round your hip this way, and to cross check if the rubber is coming a bit closer to the flap, then given the gap of like, let's say, 5 inches at the middle or 4 inches at the middle, because the zip and the Ankara will come in here. So if it's coming up this way it should not be able to touch in a free manner it should give you the freedom a bit and as well be fitted as well so the length of the rubber i'm going to use now for this my um, um jacket is um 25 25 this way so like i said the rubber's um stretchy nature differs so depending on the one you have you can as well use more than this or less than this depending on how stretchy the rubber or the fabric tends to be right so you you can as well use them um, scuba material the stretchy one in doing your band or your rubber any stretchy fabric can serve you for your rubber it mustn't be this or the other one so when you have gotten the rubber length you want then you keep this one for the both the front and the back 25 inch length is what i have here now you place it aside and then the next thing you're going to do now is for the sleeve now remember the sleeve, the rubber is still the same measurement, 2.5 inch, you mark 2.5, you mark 2.5, right here, you cut it off, 2.5, right, so you as well bring in the rubber to place to cut, then how then do we cut this one now, now the round sleeve here is 8, now convention will tell you that depending on how stretchy the rubber is, you now detect 2 inches, from the real round sleeve, use it to cut for the sleeve. By the time it stretches, it augments to eight. So since my rubber is stretchy enough, I have um, eight measurements. I can say, okay, let me use um, um, minus 1.5. That'll give me 6.5, right? Because you have to add allowance for the sewing of the sleeve. So at the end of the day, you mark a 6.5. This 6.5 is the total width you, you are going to cut out for your rubber for your sleeve for the for the hand then you place it this way and then you are going to sew when sewing i will show you how to couple this but just know the measurements we are going we are working with this is for the for the fist of the of the hand right so the next you're gonna do now is for the um for the collar for the neck right here is the for the fist this one is settled for the hand put them together and fold the next you're gonna do now is for the neck. Now the neck I have here is um, 17 and a half, but then be a man that the rubber is not going to go right through on the neck. It will have a op an opening at the center. So you minus two inches or one and a half from this. Now if you minus one and a half from this, you're going to have um, 16 inch le left for the neck. That means you are going to cut this rubber, measure the neck measurement, then because it's stretchy, it, it's, more, it's, it's, it's prone to stretch. So you can cut the rubber at um, 13 and a half inch. That, the formula I'm using is minus 2 inches from that neck. You are going to have 16. And then the stretching edge as well, minus another 2 inches or 2 and a half. You have 13 and a half or 14 for the neck measure. Because when fixing the rubber, it tends to pull. It tends to pull. So, but then the pulling should not be fully stretched. It should be stretched in a way that when after sewing, it laps on the neck of your customer so in cutting now i can cut at um, 15 or 15 and a half then by the by the time i do the cutting and the trimmings i'll be left with the actual neck measurement i have 
So right here, you fold it into two equal parts this way, right? Fold into two equal parts this way, and then you fold again. Then when folding again, the rubber width measurement I have is around 1.5 inch width. I don't like the rubber to be too big on the neck area. I use out 1.5 maximum. So 1.5 is what I'll have as a maximum neck depth I, I will use. So from here, you cut it off. 1.5, 1.5. Now, approaching the neck area, let's say one and a half inch before the neck area, you start to curve. You curve it and then to the tip of the neck. So this is the color for my for my bumper jacket. So this is how it will be on my customer. So when fixing as well, I will well show you how stretchy this color will also go and then how you keep adjusting it until you get your desired measurement you have. So that's for the color. So right here, we are done cutting the jacket. The next video you will see will be the coupling process. Thank you for watching and make sure you practice and then give me the results. Thank you.